Hello, good morning. Um, it's just after 7 a.m. I'm just having my first sip of coffee. I woke up this morning intending to get up and clean my bathroom and do some housework and go for a walk. And I remembered today is the day to register for the Run Disney, Disneyland Halloween marathon weekend. Now I am not running a marathon, but I can do a 5K or a 10K. Um, and I've never done a Run Disney event before. I've done other like charity runs before, but never Run Disney and I've always wanted to. We weren't doing them at Disneyland. Um, before the pandemic, it was because of Galaxy's Edge construction. And then they brought the events back to Walt Disney World, but not here. And so we just had our first marathon weekend uh, like a month ago. This one's coming up in September. I thought about doing a 5K, but I figured if I'm gonna go out of my way to do a Disneyland race, I should challenge myself a little more and I'll do a 10K. Also, there are like pace requirements for the 10K, um, which it's like 16 minutes, but they recommend training pace of 15 minutes per mile which might not sound that intense, but like also you're stopping to like meet characters and take photos and do stuff like that. So um, I need to, I guess, go and like time myself and see where I'm at and uh, try to get it quicker, I guess. I don't know, that'll be a fun challenge because as you can tell, like I don't know what my pace is anyway. And I feel like experienced runners do know that. I'm just out there like trying to have fun. So um, my wait time, was just it, the gates opened at like seven i think for the virtual queue and it said more than an hour and now it's 7 11 and it says i have 17 minutes so i feel like the odds are in my favor that i might be able to register i wasn't totally sure um i've heard that these can be pretty competitive and uh just because you get in line doesn't mean you're gonna get registered um but hopefully that's a good sign it's weird that it went down so abruptly I guess they probably give you like an allotted time to once you're in to register and people probably don't use all that time. So like once the first batch of people get in, it goes down. Oh, it just went down to 13 minutes. Okay, any minute now. I'm gonna check in in a minute. Okie okie. <laughs> Okie dokie, I got in to the 10K which is perfect, it's on a Saturday, so it's not gonna interfere with like work. I thought that if I did do the Friday, I could go down there early morning and come back to work, but ideally I wanted to stay there. I wanna make like a fun weekend of it. I would love to stay on property, which is not something I've done yet, and it's not in my budget right now, but I'm gonna have to figure that out. I have, right now I have pulled up the um, Grand Californian page, like booking page, and it's like, 8 14 a night i was also looking at pixar place hotel which they just redid and it looks really cool actually after the makeover um, i haven't been inside it since then but um it looks really nice i was thinking i might want to stay there still pricey it's almost 500 a night i think if i had my choice though i would pick the disneyland hotel that's like the mid range we only have three out here so but i have stayed elsewhere in the neighborhood for like 100 150 a night something like that and been happy so another thing to consider though is like the starting line like my friend was telling me he wanted to stay on property and he didn't but like where he ended up staying was actually closer to the starting line so it ended up being more convenient i still want to stay on property though i'm just going to use that as my bright side if i can't oh bruce yeah you gotta look on the bright side what are you doing down there he's just walking around the kitchen and then i heard him crunching also, I need to do something about his haircut. He looks like a neglected little Muppet. So anyway, I'm just here in the kitchen, cleaning up, waiting for water to boil to make lunch. I didn't go grocery shopping last night after work because I was like super tired and I regretted it because this morning for breakfast I had like two heels of sourdough bread. Not even like full size bread heels, but you know like sourdough, it's like round. So the heels are like teeny tiny. I was gonna try, I actually just ordered the um, bestseller bundle from Huel, it's like their, I mean, it's exactly what it says it is. It's their bundle of like bestsellers. So it comes with, it comes with one of their, a bag of their protein. It comes with a container of um, their like ready, they're not ready meals, but you add water to them and they're ready. And I thought those would be good for like the days when I'm like, have to come home from work and go to school or like in between studying or whatever. And I don't have time to actually cook something. 
Um, they also have a few snack bars and so I got those too. So I feel like between everything that's included, I'll come up with some kind of like school snack combination because I just don't really want to spend the time and the money like getting food on the go. And like the other day, Tuesday before class, I ended up eating Del Taco in my car and I don't want that to be a regular thing. So anyway, this morning I did some reading. I did a little bit of homework. Um, I do have some other, like I feel like I'm like a little behind in school. Uh, like I'm turning everything in on time, but as far as like reading and like, like I don't wanna be in a situation where I'm trying to catch up like right before an exam. So I need to set some time aside to do that. I was gonna do it today, but I think I might wait until the weekend. I have Saturday, Sunday off, um, but I am volunteering with horses again this weekend, but I feel like it'll be nice to kick out that studying when I have like a good chunk of time to do it. So today I only have one client to see. And then after that, I'm just using this, like I need a, I told you my tripod thing is broken, so I just hold on to the leg for safekeeping, even though every time I try to use it, the leg falls off. Like, it's fine when I'm just using it to stand up, because I just need it to support the weight. I don't need it to actually, like, do anything. But, like, on the cabinets, it's useless. Anyway, so I'm going to go see my client, and then I'm going to get coffee. And I was going to use that time to study, but I think I'm going to do something else. Um, I've been neglecting my Substack newsletter. I have one for training for my business, dog training. Um, and I've also been wanting to start like a personal newsletter. And I feel like that will be beneficial for me in like multiple ways. I think that I need an outlet to just write like as myself and not think about like, oh, I'm writing for this professor or I'm writing for um, potential clients or I'm writing for people who want to learn about dog training or even like on social media, like on Instagram, it's like you're thinking about the algorithm and stuff. And I think Substack is a little different. I think it's easier to just write and think about like what you want to say without, I don't know, like without worrying as much about how it's going to be received. You just kind of trust that the people that you're writing for will find it. I didn't even pay attention to what time I put that in. Did you guys pay attention? I'm supposed to cook it for like 10 minutes. And I've been, the camera's been running for eight. So I'm going to say six, five. So anyway, I'm going to try to publish one newsletter for each this week. The personal newsletter will probably just be like an introduction, like bio and like why I'm writing. And then the like business newsletter obviously is going to be more related to like dog training, um, which I could get into right now, what I'm going to write about, but I will just post it in the description if you want to read it. It's basically gonna be about how I'm taking a little break from seeing clients and kind of figuring out like what direction I wanna go in and um, maybe other ways of teaching that I wanna explore. Okay, now I'll use this as a prop. It's got a happy face. Anyway, I think that is about all I wanna talk about right now. Um, I'm going to maybe later today or tomorrow, I'll try out that Huel stuff and tell you what I think. I've like watched some other YouTube videos about it and I've seen like reviews are pretty mixed. So I don't know, we'll see. Um, and then I'm also going to talk about like my run Disney thing because uh, my pace is something I'm going to have to work on. So I'll probably be sharing the process of doing that uh, in future videos. Also, Bruce just stares at me while I'm doing this like I've lost my mind. Of course, he stops doing it when I take the camera out, but he's literally just just standing there staring at me like, Mom, who are you talking to? Okay, I have five minutes. I'm going to eat this fuel bar. Five minutes before class, I should say. I just got to school. Okay, it's like a chocolate coated one. It's peanut and caramel flavor. I don't know. I've heard some things. I would say, like, on the healthy to candy bar spectrum, it's like somewhere in the middle. Maybe a little bit more on the candy bar side. Anyway, I went to the coffee shop with the intention to work on my sub stack. What actually happened is I ended up reading a lot of other people's substacks for like two hours, which was good because, oh my gosh, sometimes I feel embarrassed um, doing my vlog at school, but there's like an empty parking lot across from where I am and a guy just got out of his car and started dancing. I think he's doing a TikTok. Oh, now he's moving. He literally got into the empty parking lot to do that. And I've thought about doing that too, but then I'm like, people are going to think it's weird if I'm sitting in the, it's like a fully empty parking lot if I'm just the only one sitting in here. He literally parked his car and did a little dance and then he left. But you know what, good for him. I feel like students should have their creative pursuits. 
Maybe he's not even a student here. Maybe he just knows there's like a good empty parking lot. Anyway, earlier today, like I felt very ready to write and I feel like I even got to the coffee shop ready to write, but the more I was reading other people's, like, and it was good. Like I was finding stuff that I like wanted to read and subscribe to, but like the more I read, the less ready I felt to write. And I think it was like a comparison thing or like starting to overthink or like, I don't know. So like lesson learned that I won't do that next time. Next time I will be ready to write and just write. But also I think it's intimidating to write a good first post because, because it's like, what do I do? Do I write like about myself? Do I write what I want the newsletter to be about? I don't really know. It could, I could intend for it to be about one thing and then it ends up being about another thing as time goes on. The good thing about the first post though is on my personal newsletter, I literally have one subscriber and I don't even know how that person found me. I think I did make like a, here comes my newsletter post, like stay tuned. And I think they subscribed when I posted that. That was like in October. So that's the good thing about like the first post or first YouTube video or first whatever is like not that many people are going to see it until you start posting like better stuff. Then they might go back and look at your old stuff, but nobody's going to judge you for it. Hello again, it is Friday night. It's a little after five. I just got home from my last client. Today has felt like a really long day. And I don't think it's like that I did that much today. I just like woke up at 4 a.m. and I couldn't go back to sleep. So I just decided to start the day. So it's been, it's just felt like a long one. So I just got back from work and in between clients today, I had some time. So I went to a local independent bookstore um, and I got some used books. I definitely didn't get what I came for though. I. Like I said, I'm doing the horse thing tomorrow and I want to like work on my horse knowledge, but because I don't have a lot of horse knowledge, they had like three or four horse books at this bookstore and I didn't know enough to know whether they were good books or not. Like one of them for sure didn't seem legit and like with used books, obviously some of them are going to be like older editions. So I don't know. I didn't get any horse books, but I did get three <laughs> books and I had decided going in there, I was only going to get a horse book and that was it. But I actually didn't fully, I wasn't totally sure that it was a used bookstore. And then when I saw how cheap the books were, I, I had some trouble. So the first one that I grabbed is this one. It's called Nerds, uh, who they are and why we need more of them. Obviously that was right up my alley. Um, this looks like an interesting book. It says it talks about the conformity of adolescence and the endurance of adolescent stereotypes long after people should know better, um, the pathologizing of nerds with diagnosis such as Asperger's syndrome, the archetypal struggles of nerds and jocks in popular culture and history. So that sounds interesting. It's so funny that like these books have like people's names written in them. They'll have like notes and stuff in the margins. Like these weren't just somebody's like junk books. These were books that like people actually read and enjoyed. So the next one I grabbed is called High Theory, Low Culture. It looks like a pretty short book. Um, and this one is about kind of like, like basically like why people respond to certain types of media like stories. And it seems like it, it covers a lot of stuff. Like it mentions like tabloids and football and um, movies and other types of media and like basically just where the emotional response comes from. And I was like glad to find, see there's like someone's post-it note in here. Um, I was glad to find this one because I actually picked up a book in Barnes and Noble a couple of months ago. Um, not picked up, like brought home, but just picked up and <laughs> held in my hands um, that was on a similar topic, but it was really long. It was probably like, I want to say 400 pages and because it was new at Barnes and Noble it was probably like 30 bucks and I ended up not getting it it was also full of like data and graphs and stuff and this seems more of like a written analysis and it, this also has like a lot of notes in the margins from the previous owner so I think this one will be really interesting and then the last one I got is um DIY MFA um and I got this because I've been wanting to work on my writing skills um both like academic writing, which I mean, I'm doing that at school, but also just like writing for different types of audiences. And I kind of talked about that earlier when I was talking about Substack. Um, and I've actually like thought about it, like, you know, I think this is just me doubting myself is like, well, if I don't go to vet school, maybe I could go do like a master's program or something, something related to like writing and communication and like media. But then when I think about like what, what I really want to be an expert in and like, what do I need to be an expert in to do it well? 
like I can learn on my own about writing and like practice and like just post things and like see how it goes um I cannot do veterinary medicine <laughs> without an education so I feel like that is has to be the main project and this is like the side project so um I thought this was a really good appropriate book for me the dogs are like pacing around I feel like you can probably hear them clicking their nails around in the background because uh, I just heated up the water for their dinner but I'm also gonna make the Huel dinner that I got and I'm gonna show you what came in this box. So I did already try the um, protein powder. I grabbed it on like in between clients earlier. I actually like ran in and got it and left and the dogs were like confused. Like what, what just happened? Why aren't you staying? Um, it was really good. I really liked it. I was kind pleasantly surprised I will say cause like I said, the reviews were very, seemed mixed. Um, but the flavor was good. The texture was good. It was a lot creamier than I expected and I just made it with cold water Like I was debating whether I should use some kind of milk, but um, I don't think I would I don't think I would like it like that It would be too much. So um, this is what the shaker thing looks like and I feel like that added to like the nice texture And I got the chocolate flavor. I don't know if I mentioned that um, and I actually got two bags of it Which I was confused about like one came in the package and then I came out with like one extra It was because I signed up during a promo and they included like their most popular protein or something along with whatever orders over a certain amount at that time. So basically like one came with the most popular bundle and then one came with that promo. So obviously also it came with the shaker cup and then it came with four of these little scoops. It came with this little pot thing. They call it a pot. It's basically just a cup. This is like to make your instant like meals, like the hot meals. So let me go ahead and make that now because it's gonna take, I think you have to wait a few minutes for it to like cook. Um, so this is the meal they sent me. It is called chicken and mushroom. It's all plant-based. Um, I thought it was interesting that like the package has, like you can see the little mushrooms, you can see some like penne pasta that, I don't know if you can see there's little green onions, but also just like all this dust, <laughs> like the powder coming out. And I don't know if that's like the best marketing for like a meal that comes out of a bag. Like if it were me, I think I would not want customers to get like the powder imagery. Okay, so it gives you the water measurements by ounce and then the, the meal measurements by scoop. And there is a line in here. I'm just gonna assume that that's the line that I'm supposed to fill it to, but I don't know if that's correct. Wait, it did come with instructions. Yes, I was correct. Fill it to the line. Okay. okay, so you probably, I don't know if you can see this. If not, I'll, yeah, you can, you can. It's just like powdered and noodles. There's more stuff in this box, by the way. I feel like I'm doing a bad job of unboxing this. I should have shown you everything first, but I want to make this, like have it cook in. And then it comes with the lid, but it says don't shake it, and it says don't screw the lid on. Just kind of set it on top. So we'll do that. We'll set it aside. And then I'll show you what else came in here. I got two, two bottled drinks. I got a chocolate and a vanilla. There's like a little information like insert about their stuff and then like a $15 coupon off the next order. Oh, I forgot I got also a t-shirt and I don't remember what it looks like. Oh good, I got the black one. Okay, it's just a simple black t-shirt with the logo on the chest. I kind of wish it said it all the way across. They had like a couple of options and I, I didn't, the other one I think they did have a larger logo but it was like gray and I didn't want to wear gray. Okay, and then lastly, I got the uh, daily greens, which I'm also going to try right now. I put some water in the fridge for it. It feels like this one already has a scooper inside. The other ones didn't. And then it came with a bottle for this as well. Um, so like I said, I chilled the water and it says to do one scoop of this and shake it for 10 seconds. Also, I thought it was weird that they were so specific. They said everything like except the hot meal, the, well, I guess the protein and this, shake it for 10 seconds. I shook the protein for like 30 seconds. And it was really good so maybe that's like my secret recipe but in case you were wondering i didn't over shake it okay the scoop in here is a smaller scoop i'm not going to show you because it might be messy also it has like a sweet smell to it and i'm not totally sure why i see i mean there's a lot of greens and stuff in here there's also carrot sweet fennel fruit oh man i think this might have caffeine in it does it because it has it says it has green coffee bean extract, mate leaf extract, and I think I saw something else. Yeah, we're getting green tea leaf extract. If that's the case, I'm not gonna try it right now, but I will do a quick Google to be sure. Okay, good news. It says undetectable levels of caffeine. I feel like my, like my threshold, I might, I feel like could detect it, but we'll try it anyway. It does smell good. I feel like this is gonna be better than I expected to. 
What do you think about that? You want to smell it? I let Judith sniff it and she tried to lick it. I feel like that's a good sign. Okay, the taste is good. The taste is good. It has like a breakfasty taste to it almost. Like there's something in it that reminds me of like cereal, like a healthy cereal, not like Lucky Charms or anything, but but there is powder that like sinks to the bottom. That would be my co only complaint, I think. That part tasted different. That, that swig, like the second half, the second part tasted like more like banana, kind of, and I don't think there's any banana in here. So I think you just have to like shake it and chug it to keep the powder mixed in i probably also if i wasn't drinking this for like for a youtube video i would probably not chug it this fast okay i'm gonna set this aside because i i made it i think i need to check on the pasta it's like soupy i don't think it's not supposed to be soupy and i think that was the complaint that i saw that people had like that the texture it was just a little off like the pasta wasn't getting cooked all the way so it was like a little bit chewy and then also you have all this like can I show you leftover liquid in there oh no <laughs> it's okay I don't know what I'll do with that it's just like another protein shake I guess um okay it's actually good um, I was a little bummed when I got this flavor too because I was hoping for the mac and cheese, but I actually like this one. Okay, there's a little crunch on the noodles. They're not all the way cooked. <clears throat> I did see, I think people were recommending too if this is happening and you're like not okay with it, but just put it in, in like a glass dish instead and then like microwave it for a little bit. I feel like also I would probably make this with like some frozen veggies or like something easy. So the extra sauce would be appreciated because I could just toss it all in together. But this is good. Like everything I got was good. Like I would order all of these items again. I'm still maybe like on the fence about the green stuff, but I would maybe give it like a 7 out of 10. I feel like some of this stuff too, it's like about how I feel after I eat it. And I, I mean, I ate a lot of it the last couple days and I've been feeling pretty good. So, okay, I'm going to end this video, put all this stuff away so I can have my counter back. I'm going to feed the dogs and um edit this and post it on sunday it's only friday night i'm done early for once and if anything interesting happens with the horses tomorrow i'll start that in next week's vlog so i will see you um next week